Welcome Web of Wires. Most fans of my channel know that Celeste is my favorite game. I kind of fell off platformers around fifth grade and was reintroduced to them when I beat Celeste freshman year. And then I beat it a second time, and a third, and then a fourth. Point is, platformers are where I get most of my fun nowadays. So when the team behind Lumo One reached out to me asking if I could review their demo, it was hard to say no. Just to clarify, all opinions in this video are mine and mine alone, and aren't influenced by anybody. I hate repeating what people already said, but this game is obviously inspired by Ori and Celeste, but even with so many similarities, even having almost the exact same moveset as Celeste, it still manages to differentiate from itself. This is one of the few platformers that feels better with a joystick than a D-pad because of the dash ability. Instead of just a quick little boost, it's a flying mechanic that lets you soar through the water for a short period of time. The core mechanics are a bit slow, but it honestly adds to the experience of being in the deep sea. They're always tight and reliable in each area. Every area is laid out to accommodate for the controls. Each area is short and not too difficult. But something I love is that even though you die a lot, the death screens are almost instant. This is some of the fastest and smoothest animation for a death screen I have seen. You're out, and a quarter of a second later you're back in, and the levels themselves, although there aren't many in the demo, are perfect demonstrations of teaching a player how to use the controls without being too difficult. Luma One has a very distinct, yet familiar art style. The colors and lighting are very similar to Ori, but in the water. It never fails to expand your imagination on the deep sea and what could be down there, but out of anything, can I just mention how cute the protagonist is? Like, come on. Just, it's so cute. The 3D model just fits so perfectly with the rest of the world, and it pops out enough that it isn't distracting, but can't be easily lost into the background. If I were to give any criticism to the art, it would be that sometimes the background and main levels blend into each other. I got stuck on one bit because I didn't realize there was a platform there. I also feel like there was wasted potential with light shining through the water. This could have easily elevated the worlds to make it even prettier, while also making the direction you're going more visible than places you don't need to go. Just something with light shining through the water definitely could have improved the level design and add a whole extra level of depth to them, similar to Flower's way of using the wind to guide you. Luckily, the light shining through the water definitely appears in cutscenes and looks absolutely beautiful. I felt the cutscenes moved a little too fast, like I I couldn't admire them as much, or the text move either too slow or too fast, so I think giving the animation some time to pause, or letting the player skip through the text instead of automatically doing it would be better. Aside from that, you can probably see on screen just how well done every portrait is. And I want to address these little details because ironing them out would have improved my playthrough. Would it have improved yours? I don't know. But there were lots of little details I would have liked to change. Specifically these orbs you dash into, I would have loved to dash out of them when I let go of the button onto the controller instead of it going automatically. I felt I didn't have enough time to react and to some players, it might be a bit too stressful. The spikes, although definitely work as intended, I felt were a little unfair to the player. I think the hitbox is slightly too large and that the player should have slightly more breathing room when jumping near them. Not to say they aren't already fair enough, but the player needs to have the upper hand here, not the level. Coyote jumping, for example, a jump off the ledge when you aren't on a platform to accommodate for a player's late reaction time. They kind of take this finish it later approach, where they built up something and it was anticlimactic. This big opening cutscene motivates you to push through the game and it throws a pretty world at you, but you kind of expect more on the story part, or the last screen, which really confused me. I thought it would be a short 5 second cutscene saying thanks for playing, but it was just a tiny room with text. And the other thing which I thought was a bit weird, communication with them was absolutely great and responsive, but they couldn't provide me with a press kit or at least some stuff that wasn't on their Twitter or subreddit. Felt a bit weird since I've had devs that just heard I was making a review on the game and made press kits on the spot, but it's fine nonetheless. But should you play Luma One's demo, and is this something to be excited for? I recommend you play the demo. The platforming itself is solid, and the visuals are absolutely beautiful. Best of all, it's free and only takes 30 minutes, so you can beat it pretty quickly. In the indie landscape, most people come to expect the impossible out of everybody. Most of the time, indie games are hated for being similar to other indies we love. 
But does that really matter? I love Left 4 Dead. Does that make Black Ops Zombies a bad game? I love The Binding of Isaac. Does that make Enter the Gungeon a bad game? Getting more of what we love from the visions of somebody new isn't a bad thing. If it's fun, good. But just because Lumon takes inspiration from those two games doesn't mean it's bad. Lumon has lots of potential. I see it going down as one of the better platformers I've played and definitely one of the most visually impressive. I know I was being a bit harsh to it most of the time, but it's because I want it to be the best it could possibly be. And if the final release holds the same quality as the demo did, it will definitely be a good pickup for either PC or Switch.